I don't think government's very good at delivering anything, the mail or any services. I don't think they're good at fighting wars. I don't think they're good at delivering welfare. And uh, so I, I don't agree with the system at all. You just heard uh, Ron Paul, probably one of the most well-known defenders of freedom in the world, talking about why he doesn't think that government doesn't do anything particularly well. My next guest also thinks that government's inefficient and incompetent. Peter Whelan is the president of Australia's only libertarian political party, the Liberal Democratic Party. He's going to be attending the Mises Seminar in November this year. Uh, thanks for speaking to me today, Peter. Good evening. I'm just going to give um, people a brief overview of the policies of the LDP, just so that people have an idea. Um, so the LDP is basically about cutting taxes. It's about smaller government. Um, you also want to legalize euthanasia, you want to legalize marijuana, you support gun rights, voluntary voting. Have I missed anything? Um, there's probably a lot, a lot more, but uh, generally when I'm, when I'm asked uh, at my uh, golf club or at the uh, local RSL club what's it about, I sum it up by saying we want to get the government out of your pocket and out of your face. So it's a general low, small government philosophy, uh, individual rights, and uh, when you say about, for example, uh, euthanasia, uh, abortion, uh, guns, uh, a lot of those things uh, we're not for or against, we just think it's none of the government's business. It's the individual's right to choose and not to have some bureaucrat in Canberra or in Macquarie Street, Sydney, or in Spring Street, Melbourne, telling you what you can and can't do, uh, you know, really in your own time, in your own private life. So that's to sum it up. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of the LDP? How did it get started, and who were the main people involved? Yes, the uh, Liberal Democratic Party started in uh, Canberra, ACT, in uh, 2001. Uh, so we celebrated our 10th anniversary uh, early this year at a national conference in, in Canberra. Uh, it was started by uh, well, predominantly John Humphreys, a uh, well-known uh, libertarian, academic, uh, lecturer, economist, and uh, several other of his uh, uh, associates uh, were at that time in Canberra under the Howard government, uh, some of them working for government departments like uh, Treasury and Finance and they could see that the uh, Howard government was really taking Australia in the wrong direction, increasing taxes, uh, increasing uh, control over people's lives uh, and introducing uh, what we like to call, you know, uh, middle class welfare or, or uh, uh, just returning returning taxes to people who paid taxes in the first place and and uh, currently it's uh, around 50% of taxpayers receive some sort of welfare back so uh, that the approach was when they started the party uh, to say let's uh, cut, cut taxes down have a simple tax and welfare policy and that was the start of uh, and John Humphrey's uh, papers have been published uh, by people's uh, groups such as the Centre for Independent Studies uh, the 30-30 tax plan was what he originally uh, started off with, and it encompasses cutting taxes, uh, giving giving uh, uh, low-income workers uh, a tax, uh, what we call a negative income tax, to boost them up, uh, to give them off the poverty line, uh, and really in, in incorporating tax reduction and uh, welfare, really welfare reduction as well, so people have a chance to lift themselves up rather than be being dependent on handouts from the government. So that was uh, Canberra 2001, uh, and uh, we've, uh, we've progressed, we believe, in the right direction since then. So at the last election, um, I believe you guys increased your vote total? Oh, it was uh, fantastic. We're talking federal election. By the way, uh, we're registered now, Liberal Democrats are registered federally, and we have been... Uh, since about uh, we contested the, uh, the 2007 election, 
uh, and the 2010 election uh, was a dramatic increase and we got uh, around 96,000 primary votes uh, in New South Wales uh, and accumulated around around Australia where we stood uh, candidates for the uh, for the upper house uh, we were we were above all the other minor parties so certainly we've almost got a member into parliament but that's uh, uh, a quirk, a quirk of the preference system how we were not quite able to uh, get a member into parliament so and what about um, me membership in the other states uh, did you recently get registered in South Australia as well yes so quick we've uh, worked hard our, our team we've got uh, our branches in every state uh, except Tasmania Tasmania is a little bit uh, I'd say unusual or quirky anyway for a variety of reasons but we've got branches in all the mainland states and uh, we identified South Australia, we've got a good team over there and uh, they, uh, it's a matter of increasing membership uh, in each state uh, getting the electoral commission in each state to approve us and they would now uh, gain registration in South Australia so we'll be very actively uh, campaigning towards the next uh, South Australian state election. Um, I, I was involved with the LDP in 2007 it was I think I've we had a few meetings and you came to Victoria and it was really great to meet you and David and all the other people involved um, and I think one of the key policies that you guys have is your tax policies which you spoke about earlier but I think a lot of people are sort of unhappy that it's not uh, radical enough maybe instead of having a 30 percent income tax you should just you know have a 10 percent or get rid of it totally what do you think about that Yes, at the time when John Humphreys uh, conceived of the 30-30 tax, uh, tax plan, um, it, w it, was, it was practical and realistic at that time compared with what Howard was, Howard was doing. I mean, the Howard Liberal government uh, was the, uh, and I think it still is the highest taxing, uh, was the highest taxing government in Australia. So there was a lot, there was a lot of room for improvement. Now we've got on our uh, uh, LDP website, a forum actually, we're looking at uh, updating uh, that tax policy. We want to stay current, we want to stay relevant, and uh, for example, we're looking at uh, perhaps a, uh, a maximum of 20% uh, uh, tax rate on individual and companies, uh, and uh, maybe having a tax free th threshold uh, of $30,000. Uh, but uh, we're looking at suggestions really. We, we like to call ourselves practical uh, libertarians. We want to be practical, we want to be relevant, we want to influence the discussion and we really call on, on fellow libertarians to uh, not, sit, not sit back and, uh, and snipe or criticise or theorise but get active uh, and contribute. So on that forum on our uh, ldp.org.au website uh, we're looking for suggestions. And uh, you know the Henry, the Henry uh, tax review, which was uh, paid for by taxpayers and largely ignored by the uh, by the Labor government, and now they've had a tax forum, and uh, you know there's been all sorts of discussion about what should happen. But we're calling really for a tax revolution. And you're right, something dramatic needs to be done to really to starve the federal government of funds, because if we starve them of funds. Uh, we can starve them of their big spending uh, uh, approach. So a lot, of, a lot of it is waste, of course. Tax uh, a welfare churn. People holding their hand out for taxpayers' money uh, when they really should uh, get up, get up their bums and get a job. And if they, if there was an incentive to get a job and and, ha and have no tax to pay up to a certain limit, that'd be much better for all concerned. Yeah, um, Wayne Swan, actually, there's a tax summit recently, and uh, the treasurer said he'd, you know, he'd consider raising the tax-free threshold to $21,000, so um, for the LDP to stay relevant, it'd have to beat that significantly. Well, we're saying, we're saying 30, 30, at the start, $30,000, so... Yeah, okay, yeah. And what about um, other policies, like the guns policies? How has the reaction been from the public to that? <laughs> Uh, we've had, we have quite a lot of, uh, I'm, a, I'm an active uh, sporting shooter, gun owner. Uh, I shoot clay targets and rifles, pistols. And quite a lot of our members have come to us uh, because of uh, the Howard, uh, you know, really atrocious gun laws. 
you know, a lot of a lot of the liberal, a lot of people don't realise a lot of the Liberal Party branches actually closed down uh, because of Howard's uh, gun laws in '96 and then again in 2001. And the National Party, I mean, they're on record of saying it pretty much destroyed the National Party in uh, in Queensland. In fact, I like to I like to say, uh, you know, Howard's gun laws were not about getting rid of guns, but getting rid of the National Party. So uh, the the idea that you can have laws. Uh, we already have laws against murder, against you know, assault, against um, hold-ups, uh, against robbery, and then to say, ah, now, because some criminals uh, use guns to commit murders and um, hold-ups and robberies, uh, then we should ban guns. Uh, and what with, I mean, the statistics, I won't go into them now, because the statistics are readily readily available, but uh, after the 2001 uh, handgun buyback, uh, murder actually increased 20%. And when you say to someone, oh, murder went increased 20%, oh, that's, that, that's amazing. How, you know yeah. what, hap- what happened? Oh, they used they used uh, knives and uh, blunt objects and brute force, but they still committed murder. And meanwhile, the taxpayer that was you know. The taxpayer that paid for this, more than a billion dollars, uh, to crush uh, perfectly good, and I'd say relatively harmless, firearms from people who never committed any crime, and were never likely to commit any crime. And, and uh, meanwhile, uh, the criminals say, well, this is great, we can have a, uh, they've, they've taken the pressure off us, we can have a free go. So it's just, uh, I'm sorry to laugh, because, I mean, the subject of murder and and robbery is not a laughable subject, but for Howard, because of his own personal, you know, he came out and said, I had guns, and that's been broadcast uh, well, and, well and truly around the, around the flower community. I think a lot, of it's, a lot of it stems from the sensationalism that when they look at those mass shootings in America and then they say, oh, if we don't ban guns, the same thing is going to happen here. Whereas those mass shootings, you know, there's different reasons for those things happening. It's not that it's the fact that people own guns. Would you agree with that? Well, uh, the the, the uh, statistics for USA, uh, and certainly since uh, uh, the 9-11 uh, uh, attacks on the World Trade Center, gun ownership, gun ownership has increased dramatically in America, in all states, yet the crime rate and the murder rate has dropped. It's decreased. So a lot of other, lot of other factors come into play when you're talking about the crime. I mean, it's uh, in America, you've got uh, drug wars going on. You've got uh, racial gang wars in in some of the you know, you know, the urban ghettos. Uh, whereas people out in the country that have got guns, and in some of the uh, in some of the states now, they've got uh, uh, concealed carry weapon permits, so people can be permitted to carry a firearm, and in each of those states where they've introduced the concealed carry weapon laws, uh, crimes against the person have dropped. And uh, you can't deny that uh, the, uh, if, you're, if you're helping the police uh, stop crime by carrying a firearm, like the police do, uh, it's a good sign. So that's, uh, and when you look at other countries like Mexico, Mexico it's, it's uh, pretty much a private firearms of uh, a private ownership of firearms are bad. Yet we read of thousands of murders of, in the drug wars uh, of uh, use of firearms to, to uh, quell the opponents of, uh, of drug trafficking. It's not just guns. They've actually, I believe, even banned pepper spray. So they've sort of removed any method that we might have to defend ourselves from criminals. Not even yes, pep- uh, not even pepper sprays allowed. So you you you've, you've hit the nail right on the head there, Suka, because uh, some years ago, when one of our daughters was at University of Western Sydney, uh, there were a series of uh, assaults, uh, rapes, knife attacks on young young ladies, and late at night, and uh, I actually phoned the police and said, "Look, uh, our daughter goes to university over that area." Uh, the guy was running loose, uh, 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 assumed it was the one guy, the description suited, and I said, look, I'd like to uh, just uh, make sure that my daughter is well protected when she's on her way uh, home from uni. What do you, uh, 
you suggest, and the, this is on the uh, firearms, I'm oh, sorry, on the police uh, helpline, and the the, uh, the guy said, oh, why doesn't she get some pepper spray? And I said, okay, pepper spray is legal, is it? Oh, hang on, I'll just check. And he went and said, no, stop. I said, oh, what about if, what about if uh, she's, I've got a good collection of knives, I'm a knife maker. Uh, what about if she carries a knife to protect herself? Oh, hang on, I'll check. No, she's not allowed to carry a knife to protect us. But hang on, you've got, you've got this. You've got this young bloke who's going around, you know, cutting up women and raping them, who carries a knife. But my daughter, who who wants to protect herself, isn't allowed. What are you, what are you talking about? And I, I tied him up in knots of saying, you know, you can't protect yourself really with anything. Uh, and this is where it's just become so ridiculous and so uh, over 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 bureau, bureaucratized. Uh, just because of this, uh, you know, you can call it a nanny state thinking or bureaucrats thinking, oh, we better ban this. And when you look at the list of ban just for New South Wales, there are there are thousands of items which are prohibited. And uh, I, I, it uh, may be of interest to your your uh, your listeners, uh, viewers, uh, fellow libertarians, to just do a bit of a search and the New South Wales prohibited items. Uh, uh, things, things like uh, uh, the uh, the Shanghai's, the uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the other word for the the rubber the, the rubber thing that you use to, to flip stones with. Um, the uh, uh, the spear the spear fishing, certain yeah. certain types of spear fishing guns yeah. are banned. And but what they what they do then is there's a whole list of things that are banned. And there's certain groups that say, hang on, I'm a spear fisherman, I want to be able to use this. So it's, oh, well, okay, well, you, you apply for the permit, uh, we'll come and inspect your, your spear fishing equipment, and we'll, it's a matter of just control over control over control, and issuing permits and issuing licenses. Even laser, laser pointers are banned, uh, and they're a valuable tool if you're lost in the bush. And in fact, there was a... Uh, a bushwalker a couple of years ago lost in the Blue Mountains, uh, and you may recall that it was a very sad case because he'd actually phoned with his mobile phone uh, the the uh, the helpline, but because he couldn't give an exact street address, they couldn't send any or identify any uh, support for him, so he died. Uh, you know, in just in the, really the outer suburbs of Sydney, uh, they were searching for him by by uh, helicopter and. Uh, Aircraft. If he'd had a laser pointer pointing at them, he could have quickly identified his location, and they could have rescued him and saved his life. So laser pointers are banned. Oh well, what do we do? We've got to apply for a permit. If I'm an astronomer and I want to view the night sky and show show tourists where the Southern Cross is, uh, I can get a permit from somebody by filling out lots of paperwork. It's just gone crazy. So this increasing nanny state, um, it sort of motivated you to set up this award, the Nanny of the Year Award. Can you talk a bit about that? Oh, yes. Uh, well, it's not, not just the Liberal Democrats, a few other groups as well are, are getting involved with this. Yes, we've got uh, uh, nannyoftheyear.org.au and uh, we want, we've got quite a few nominations now. We've got Andrew Wilkie, of course. Who doesn't think we can be trusted to play poker machines? Uh, and we've got uh, 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 the uh, Premier of Victoria who uh, wanted to ban. Well, in fact, he's, I think he's it's already been on the fashion a fashion show. And there was a young girl from the country, and of course they shoot rabbits in the country because they're a pest. And she had presented her fashion uh, design using rabbit fur. And uh, Robert Doyle, bless his poor little poor little nanny soul, said, No, 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 you can't display rabbit fur on your fashion show because it might upset some of the greens and uh, so we've got we're calling for nominations so any of your uh, your supporters or anyone who wants to tune in uh, log on and uh, vote for a nanny of the year uh, we'll probably be having the award uh, maybe at the end of the financial year 2012 uh, pretty much uh, all this nanny nannyism is about telling people how you can can and can't spend your own money you know, you can't buy uh, fast food because it might make you fat. Uh, you can't drink uh, uh, Coca-Cola because uh, it might, or, uh, sorry, Red Bull. Red Bull is banned because you can't, but it might uh, unnecessarily excite you. 
and uh, all these sort of things. It's just we're the most over-governed country in the world, really, maybe apart from some of the some of the ex uh, uh, communist countries, semi-communist countries. So, with these uh, increasing regulations, do you think that eventually people will reach a point where you know this this sort of relates to the future of the LDP? Do you think they'll start looking at the LDP more seriously once these regulations start becoming more and more and more excessive? Look, Australians have traditionally not been great uh, supporters of political parties. They've become very cynical of politicians, very cynical of the political process. Uh, and as one of our great uh, academics said years ago, um, really all we're doing every every three years uh, is voting for a new dictatorship. Uh, so really, uh, a liberal national coalition, uh, now the Labour Greens coalition, uh, are the two major forces currently in Australia. And uh, their memberships are down. Uh, and most people don't feel inclined to join a political party and get uh, and get active and get motivated. But we're, our membership is growing. It's now uh, several thousand. I mean, we're, we're jealously got our membership, and as do most other political parties. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's more. There's, uh, I think Collingwood Football Club has, uh, you know, more than 100,000 members, and I think the Labor Party would be struggling to get, to get, to get uh, you know, 30 or 40,000 members. So but we're hoping that people can get so pissed off with what's happening to them that, uh, that they'll certainly want to join the uh, Liberal Democrats and hopefully vote for them. Well, that's a good note to end the interview. Um, thanks for coming on, Peter. And I hope that the LDP grows, and I hope that people start seriously looking at the LDP. And I'll see you in November at the Mises Seminar. Yes, looking forward to it. Thanks, to, thanks for the opportunity. To An idea whose time has come cannot be stopped by any army or any government.